Praise the name of Jesus. Once again, we're at the midweek teach. We're heading towards the end of the year. And a new year is looking us in the face. We have to be prepared and solid, ready to stand. Whatever is thrown at us. Let us not forget the Lord. What hope do we have without him? So, we're going to be reading from Isaiah 53 today. We read from Isaiah 53 on Sunday. We'll continue on. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness and when we see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He, is a, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and a sheep before the shearer and as a sheep before its shearers is silent so he opened not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment and who will declare his generation for he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence. Nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the labour of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify 
minute. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the sinners for the transgressors. Once again, once again, uh, there's a lot in there. But a wonderful, a wonderful encouragement, wonderful reminder, all that the Lord done, all that Father done and all that Jesus done. <laughs> and all that we receive by the Spirit. I titled our message today, How Can We Forget Calvary's Tree? How Can We Forget? Eh? The verse is primarily 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And it pleased. the father to bruise the son it it pleased the Lord okay. pleased the Lord because the father was thinking of of all of us buried in our sin. And some say crushed, yet it pleased the Lord to crush him. Okay? To crush his own son for the sinner, for the vile and the wicked. They made his grave with the wicked. Verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he'd done no violence. And no deceit was found in his mouth. The spotless lamb. How can we forget? Yet we have uh, the pagan season Christmas coming up and everyone will forget him. They'll forget what he said. Don't add to the word, don't take away from my word. Don't think beyond what is written. Do as I say. <laughs> eh? Do as I say. But they're not doing as he says. Jesus, he said, they're my brother, sister and mother, hear the word of God and do it. So who are these people doing this Christmas and and troubling themselves, jostling through the shopping centres <laughs> day after day, the echo of children crying and yelling and the parents 
discontented and stressed. Right? We love these people. We should be exulting and praising and and putting forth the Lord's name daily. Celebrating daily. Not with a tree. Not with a a, 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 a green tree, but with an old rugged cross. Hey? And I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for my crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, holds a wonderful attraction for me, where the dear Lamb of God hung for us. Eh? Like a lamb to the slaughter and like a sheep before its shearer. And the clouds were so dark that day on the hill when Jesus, my Lord, hung perfectly still. There were thorns on his head, nails, hands and feet. As he gave up the ghost, he said, it's finished with me. It was 39 stripes, that's 40 less one. And he took every stripe, just as they come. Hung on that cross. For sinners, you see, and it was 39 stripes that brought healing for me. When I sit in church and the preacher, he preached of the cross on the hill and the blood of the king, my heart starts weeping deep down within with joy as I'm counting the stripes Jesus took on for me. Calvary's tree, oh Calvary's tree, I'll never forget how he hung there for me. Calvary's tree, oh Calvary's tree, I'll never forget how he hung on that tree. How can we forget Calvary's tree? A lot of people get all excited and they get tattoos. Uh, they might have mum written on there or their girlfriend's name or they might have dad written on there or might have I love New York or I don't know. They might have a tattoo of a vampire or something on f full back tattoo because that's what they love but I I can't forget Calvary Street I, I I loved he who hung there so much I love him who hung there to the place where I got what happened? What he did for me, tattooed on my arm, that I'll be able to talk to people. 
and people have already asked. What's that 39 and 40 written there? What's that about? I said, that's 39 stripes he took for you and me. I don't know how true it is, but it's been said that there were there is thirty nine major main diseases in the world. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> and then again I heard that the Roman soldiers I don't weren't able to give 40 stripes because it was too degrading. So they left it at 39. But you hear a lot of stories, don't you? I prefer to see it in script. But 39 stripes is in script. That's 40 less one. He took every stripe just as they come. He hung on that cross for sinners. That's what we're reading today. He'd done it for sinners. And he wounded for our sins. And uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. Over in verse 12, it says, He poured out his soul unto death. He's numbered with sinners. He bore the sin of many. He made intercession for sinners. How can we forget? The one who cares for us so much, the one who loves us so much, And you see that, you see that in marriages, don't you? You see one loves the other more. Sometimes the other one doesn't care much at all. And the one always keeps pouring it out, gets nothing in return. You can write that off under the name Jesus, and he loved us so much. He'd been through, he went through so much for us. What a beautiful love story. Directed and arranged by Father. (laughs) Directed at us. Arranged by Father. I'm just going to zip over to um, John, a very popular verse, very popular verse, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hey? Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Father so loved the world that he gave his son. Hey? Makes it clear God has a son, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God has a son. Once again, the wonders go out the door. Okay? It pleased the Lord, verse 10. Verse 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. 
he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall seize seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Please the Lord to bruise him. Please the Father to bruise the Son. What a love story is that. What a beautiful... What a beautiful song. What a beautiful sound. Coming out from the hill. Golgotha. How can we forget? Let's go over to Matthew. How can we forget? People do forget. It's amazing. It's a shock. But people forget in the jostle and hustle and bustle of the world. They forget. Matthew 13 and the verses 22 in my Bible it reads but he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. And then verse 22, Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Do you see the difference there? You've got the one who receives the seed on the good ground. He had a good heart. We need to have a a good heart. A good heart these days is hard to find. And they produce fruit. They bear fruit. And the fruit is good fruit. It's respectful fruit. It's loyal and faithful. That one... Fears God. But there's this other one. And he received the seed among the thorns. See? And he hears the word and the cares, the cares, see? The cares of this world. In, in the jostle, in the hustle and bustle eh? of the world. The cares of, of the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. See? Cares and money. That's what chokes the word. Throttles it. (laughs) Imagine the man called cares and the woman called money and they're standing there and they're choking they got their hands around the throat of the word choking it. And 
they become unfruitful. Okay. How can we forget? They forgot. Where the seed fell on the thorny ground. They heard the word. And then he heard the word. But the cares of the world. And money. I don't know how many, look, I don't think I could count the amount of people, whether they were churched or unchurched, that come to me over the decade on the street and stopped and talked to me for a little and you could see the cares of the world were, were just choking what I was saying. And it was coming out of their mouth. Oh, look, I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I can't talk, I, you know, one day I'll get to your church. One day. Right? I don't really want to commit at the moment. <laughs> you know. I just got a new job. I just got married. Just married this morning. How happy we are. And... The preferences are given there. Oh, I'm just going to lunch. Food. Drink. Marriage. Giving in marriage. As it was in the days of Noah. How can we forget? I tell you, people forget. People forget. They should read Isaiah 53. Once a week at least. Read about the lamb who went to the slaughter. Hey? The one who took the beating for them. Stepped in, took the beating, took our sins, and the Lord laid on him the sin of us all. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, everyone to his own. But the Lord laid on him sin of us all. Glory, hallelujah. How can we forget? I can never forget how he hung there for me. And when I got this tattoo put on my arm, it wasn't for uh, me to remind me. It was to boast about him to boast about Jesus say look look what he done for us what do you do for him what do you do through him are you boasting about him or are you boasting about Santa are you boasting about your presence are you boasting about him? Let us never forget to boast of the Lord. There's glory in the Lord. Eh? I bear the marks of Christ upon my body. I'm referring to the scars from being set on fire by a Muslim from Saudi Arabia. Let's boast about him. How Father crushed him for us to compensate, to 
to be a propitiation for our sin. Eh? Let's go out today and boast and tell the love story of Jesus. Eh? Let's tell the love story, the most beautiful love story. Sometimes I, I go to the street and I think to myself, where do I begin to tell the story of the Saviour on the tree who gave his life not only for me but for all who see. I would never know Only for the writings Of his book Where do I begin? He's, he's done so much, hasn't he? Jesus has done it all for me Up there upon the tree Gave up the ghost. Gave us the victory. He was wounded for our sins. Bruised for our sins. Chastised. That we may have peace of mind. There's a lot of people out there tormented. There's a lot of people in their own minds. They're going over and over things all the time in their own minds. But it's Jesus. The 39 stripes sorted it. <laughs> the 39 stripes, that's 40 less one. And he took every stripe just as they come, one by one. He hung on that cross for sinners, you see. And it was 39 stripes that brought salvation for me. Brought healing. You know, healing, deliverance, redemption and salvation. They're, they're basically one, aren't they? Eh? You, you can put all them under the heading of salvation. Wonderful. Enabling us. How can we forget Calvary's tree? Enabling us. To lay hold of honesty, truth and humility with Jesus as number one and preeminent. Honesty, truth and humility. Don't have to be shifty anymore. Okay? A wonderful Lord, Ecclesiastes. Can we go to Ecclesiastes, please? Ecclesiastes, just after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes. Uh, nine. Ecclesiastes nine. I'm going to start reading in verse 13. This wisdom I have also seen under the sun 
and it seemed great to me. There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it. He seized it and built great snares around it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that same poor man. Then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Words of the wise, spoken quietly, should be heard rather than the shout of a ruler of fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. <laughs> Yet no one remembered the same poor man. See? But he was poor and he was wise. Hey? Well, so much for the Pentecostal, oh, if you're wise, you'll be wealthy, materially wealthy. And here we have this chappy. He uh, delivered the whole city. Huh? It's only a little city, but still, he delivered the whole city. Yet no one remembered. <laughs> no one remembered. And look at Jesus. He was no materially wealthy man, was he? Huh? And he did. He delivered the world. He he made way for the world, the the whole planet. And who remembers him? Who, who remembers exactly what he'd done and who he'd done it for? And why he'd done it? Who remembers? In the jostle and hustle and bustle of the world, some remember him as a good teacher. Hey? It, it, it's like, wicked humanity allowing him to be what they think he is. Oh, they some think he's father. Oh, he's Jesus and he's father and he's the Holy Ghost. Phew, boy. Now the scriptures don't say that. The, the scripture says that Jesus is Jesus. The, the scriptures are very clear about that. Right? It pleased the Lord to crush the Son. It pleased Father to crush Jesus. Right? Some think he's uh, Mother Mary's son. I think he he began his existence through Mary, but he was before the planet. <laughs> the scriptures say that Jesus is, is the Son of God and the Son of Man, and the King of Israel. King of the Jews. Huh? King of the Jews. Jesus of Nazareth. And the scriptures say that he is God manifested in the flesh. God Almighty. The scriptures say that he is uh, 
Messiah and Deliverer. The scriptures say that he rose from the dead. The scriptures say a lot about Jesus, but I don't read any scriptures where it says that he is the father or he has no father. I don't read that. I know people who are oneness and who are bound by modalism, a false doctrine. They always seem to take people to Isaiah uh, 9 in the sandy season especially. Um, Isaiah 9, 6 which says unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His name will be called. Right? It didn't say he is the Everlasting Father. Right? Even like Paul said, he was like a nursing mother. Does that mean he... Does that mean that... Uh, Paul was a woman when Paul said that he was a nursing he treated the people like a nursing mother Aye. no it doesn't it doesn't say that at all it doesn't mean that that Paul treated people like a a nursing mother doesn't mean he's a mother. Eh? So, yeah. How can we forget? How can we forget the one who hung on the tree? I know I can't. I know I can't forget the one who hung on the tree. The 39 stripes brought healing for me. And I weep with joy, you know. I weep with joy. How Jesus hung on the cross for me. Thirty nine stripes. What the Lord done at the tree, hey? Now, let's go over to um, Genesis 1, just for a, just for a look there in Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Hey? How can we forget the A-team? How can we forget the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Hey? God said, and look what God said in Isaiah 53. Right? It was. We, we better believe it. <laughs> That's the way it was. And it's very sad, isn't it? Right? It's very sad. People don't believe what God said.
Who has believed our report? This is the Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah. Who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Hey? Tender plant and a dry ground. We all like sheep have gone astray, everyone to his own. God said, the Lord says that um, if you find an error again, If you lay hold of it, the truth, and most people, they are aware the truth is lethal. I tell you now. The truth will guarantee, it's guaranteed that the truth will kill the old man. Eh? When you abide in the truth, you'll go free from that old sinful man. John 8, 30, 36. Or was it John 8, 30 to 33? Better just check that. Thirty-six. Truth is lethal, shocking, and uh, because it divides and separates. You see how it's divided and separated. Um, the the Santi people from the disciples of Jesus. Unbelieving from believing. Faithful from the faithless. Holy from the unholy. Separating. And the Lord tells us to pick up our cross and follow. Now, if Jesus prepaid... And sorted everything, and it doesn't matter if you're in repetitious sin or why. Why uh, do we have to remember? Someone else was going to say then, but just it was snatched. <laughs> it was snatched from me. But, um, yeah, the Lord Jesus hung on that tree, eh? Calvary's tree. Pick up your cross. Why would you have a cross? When, when the one saved, always saved that Jesus... Uh, hung on the cross and we don't have to do anything as the, the Baptist religion would say we don't have to do anything independent fundamental metal case go fund me Baptist no, nothing to be done what's this pick up the cross bit what's that eh? oh happy days Pick up your cross. So we got a cross and he hung on the cross. For sinners, you see. 39 stripes board healing for me. What's that about? If it's once saved, always say you wouldn't need to pick up a cross, would you? You'd just say, yeah, I believe. And say, he believes, Bill. Write him up. He's saved. 
you went living that cross involved. Because he's taken it all, hasn't he? Uh, he makes it clear. If you want it, you want what I accomplished, it's going to cost you. You're going to be separated. Hey? Eh? Sanctify thyself today. Separate. You see, Jesus carried our sorrows. He bore our griefs. Smitten and afflicted. Wounded for our sins. Bruised for our sins. Chastised for our peace. He done that. We're just accessing it. Hey? It's a good grief. It's a good grief. The chastening of the Lord is grievous for a season. But then it reaps the peaceable fruit. Uh, the peace fruit. Not come on now, the peace train. That was all. Cat Stevens. It was followed by the man Shadow. Or followed by the Muslim flag. The shadow of it was hanging over him, waiting for him. And they got him in the end. Changed to the place where he even changed his name. And music. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? Frightening to be converted to the wrong God, isn't it? You see them all out there amazed. Now and then I, I watch travel, travel um, docks. You know, where people travel here and there and they see the gods of the district. Oh, so sad. So sad. And they got some statue there and putting the red paint on the cow. Or dressing a monkey up or something. <laughs> you know, the monkey is riding a bicycle. How can we forget how he hung there for me, how he hung there for us? I'm going to go over to Psalm 9. Psalm 9. Where is thou? Psalm 9. I'm trying to remind people, you know, with me tattoos, say, man alive, you're 64 year old. You, you, you've got a stereotype, you know. When are you gonna, when are you gonna stereotype out? I might be 64, but I tell you what, I'm not going to be these retirees who lie in a bed with liquid food and urine in their trousers. No way in the world. I go out with a bang. Psalm 9, and the verse is, Seventeen. It says in my Bible, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forgot God. 
What do you think of that? Huh? Turned into hell, and all the nations have forgot God. How can we forget? I, I don't think we'll forget that scripture. Huh? The wicked shall be turned, they'll be directed. You ever seen those detour signs on the road? And you can't go anywhere else. You're only going to make matters worse if you try to go anywhere else. you just got to follow the detour sign. And here's the Lord saying that the, the sinner will be turned into hell, directed. This way, please. <laughs> Instead of detour written on the sign, it would be hell. And the Lord's waving them on. Eh? He's the uh, traffic. The traffic guide. And all the nations that forgot him will go there too. Nations. All the nationality. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you're Chinese if you're from the Wantangi tribe, it doesn't matter if you speak Queen's English, it doesn't matter. And all the nations, all the nationalities, that's why the Great Commission says that his message has to be ministered to all nations. Right? That they'll, they'll get the opportunity to make their decision to follow the Lord or not. Matthew twenty eight nineteen. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, all the nationalities, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with thee always, even to the end of the age. What do you think of that? Okay. All the nations, and all the nations that forget God. There's a lot of people here, all the nationalities, make disciples of all the nationalities. So God is not partial and God is not racist. God is not a racist. He's righteous. This is what he said for us to do. So how can we forget? Calvary's tree. My boast is in the Lord, what he's done with this little country lad from a tiny little country town <laughs> eh? in the Tropic of Capricorn. My boast is how wonderful the Lord has been to me down through the years. The Lord's been good to me. Yeah. I don't want to see the Lord leading or directing people into hell. It's best just to remember, isn't it? Remember the law before the silver cord is loosed. Huh? Yeah, some... 50, can we go there? Psalm 50. Glory to the Lamb. Psalm 50. Let's see what we've got, eh? Hey? Yeah. Psalm 50 and... 
the verse is. 22. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. See that? What do you think of that? Consider this. You who forget the Lord. How can we forget the Lord? But if we do forget the Lord, He'll tear you in pieces. Is that the God we hear about today? The righteous judge. Right? What do you think? Consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. And no one can deliver us from the hand of the Lord. And Paul said the same thing. Right? He knew the fear of the Lord. The apostolic Paul. Right? He knew the fear of the Lord. Knowing the fear of the Lord, Paul said. There's no one out there. There's no one out there that's going to deliver. He persuaded men, right? knowing the fear of the Lord, he persuaded men to, to turn from their wicked way. And did they turn? It's 2 Corinthians 5, 9, Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, I believe women too, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. See? See, you might not be well known, you might not be famous in the world, but I believe if you go forward with the truth and you speak the truth and boast of Jesus, you're going to be well known in, in the conscience. Of all the people you speak to, providing you don't compromise with them in what's being said, a lot of people do that. They say one thing, and then when it comes to the nitty gritty, they change to save face so that the person won't think badly of them. Well, all they remember of you in their conscience is that you're like a reed and you go to and fro at the wind. That's all they'll remember. They won't take you seriously. Huh? I just remember you're weak. You're a compromiser. That's all I remember when I talk to people. I remember them either as uh, forthright and upright and righteous, or I remember them as reeds, compromisers, two-faced, fork-tongued, 
one or the other. It can't be both. It can't be both. got to be the same. We have to, uh, as the world would say, stick to our guns. <laughs> stick to our guns, but we know the world's run out of ammunition, don't we? They've run out of ammunition. What shall they do at the judgment stand? Knowing, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men and women but we are well known by God, well known to God, and I also trust, uh, well known in your conscience, hey? well known in your conscience. Back to Psalm fifty-one twenty-two. Now consider this, you who forget God lest I tear you in pieces. Huh? And then there's no one there to help. Because once God starts on you, that's it. There's no help. Huh? Once the Lord starts, boy, oh boy. Ari, Sodom and Gomorrah. Ari uh, forward slash Nebuchadnezzar. Ari forward slash Judas who hung himself. All these little situations that arise. Psalm 51, 23. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. That's what the Lord said. And to him... Who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. See, if your conduct is right before God, you'll be saved. <laughs> eh? How can we forget him? How can we forget Calvary's tree, what he done? So that we can get our conduct aright. Eh? So we can get his, our conduct Right in his eyes, and the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable, be a right in his sight, in the light of his mind. Eh? Glory, glory, hallelujah. Him who orders his conduct aright. right. I will save him. I will save her. But the conduct must be right. Amen. As Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes aright. I mean, a... <laughs> According to the rules. Oh, I didn't know there was any rules. Yeah. Yes, there is. But I was told uh, by the Independent Fundamental Go Fund Me, Mental Case Baptist, I was told that I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even know there was any rules. Because right? we're saved by grace. Whoever she is, I don't know. But she's certainly given pretty uh, a lot of free tickets to heaven. Yeah, I believed. And, and Bill said to John, write him up, he's saved. <laughs> if anyone competes in athletics, he is not, he's not crowned. Unless he obeys the rules. So the athletics, the athletes line up. Okay. And the gun fires 
and they run. They take off and bolt. 100 yards sprint. And hang on, this guy is, is leaves and bounds ahead of the other one. Eh? And um, they said that's impossible. He'd done the 100 yard sprint in minus 3,000 seconds. How did he do that? Then they found out he was injected with Formula One racing fuel. <laughs> Disqualified. He never competed according to the rules. You're not allowed to inject yourself with Formula One racing fuel. Eh? So we've got to fe- compete according to the rules. So are you competing according to the rules? Or are you doing Santi? It's all right, we're doing it for the children. Because the children are above Jesus. It doesn't matter what Jesus thinks. We're doing Christmas for the children because we like to see them smile. So it's basically not about Jesus. It's not about the children. It's about we. It's about me who likes to see the children smile. Is that right? I like to see them happy and have a little giggle. Well, who doesn't like to see the children have a giggle? Eh? It's amusing. But there's many ways children can have a giggle and a laugh and an ice cream without bringing paganism into their lives. Lying to them. And the church is accepting it. And going along with it lest the coffers run dry from speaking the truth <laughs> in a world of liars and lies, violence and hatred, looting and trashing and burning, racism, selfishness, pig-headedness and unteachableness. That's not a word. Yes, it is. Um, You know? How can we forget? The clouds were so dark That day on the hill When Jesus, my Lord, Hung perfectly still There were thorns on his head, Nails, hands and feet As he gave up the ghost He said, it's finished with me. Calvary's tree, oh Calvary's tree, I'll never forget how he hung there for me. Calvary's tree, oh Calvary's tree, I'll never forget how he hung on that tree. When I sit in church and the preacher he preached of the cross on the hill and the blood of the king My heart starts weeping with joy deep down within. As I'm counting the stripes Jesus took on for me. Calvary's tree, oh Calvary's tree. I'll never forget how he hung there for me. Calvary's tree, oh Calvary's tree. I'll never forget how he hung on that tree. For you and me and us and them and all who call upon his name that we may have might to fight the fight of faith faithfully for further to the finish. Amen. And I am finished for the moment. So I'm going to leave it there. And uh, don't forget. Don't forget God. Because if you do, he'll tear you to pieces. I don't want that for people, I want them to be saved. So it's best they order their conduct right today and get it right today through Jesus, the Son of God, Father's Son. Everybody said, Amen.